Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. How are you? Pretty good. Um, I just want to point out that Liberty Larry almost scheduled us out of a podcast this week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got a lot on my plate, man. I don't know what to tell you. That was that was a, a weird phone call. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. He called me this morning, and he said, Hey, are you like really set on recording tonight or can we record tomorrow and i said no man it's fine we can record tomorrow and he's like okay i'm going out of town tomorrow <laughs> yeah <laughs> like after I, I like i started running through my head what i had to do tomorrow i was like oh i have to leave <laughs> yeah which would make recording difficult that would that would be a problem yeah, yeah. so um <laughs> So, Glad yeah. you figured it out so, before yeah. you hung up. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that would have been really bad. They've called you back an hour later and yeah. been like, hey, wait. <laughs> or called me back tomorrow morning on your way out of town. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot. We can't record yeah. tonight. I forgot I got a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it definitely could have been worse. but Yeah. Um, Still definitely a brain lapse on my part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a strange phone call. And you keep doing it to me because my phone doesn't ring that much because I just I don't have many friends. Yeah. And um, so I was like really intent on something at the office when the phone rang and it startled me again. <laughs> it's like every time Gary calls, like I jump because I'm, you know. That's funny. I'm going to have to start calling you more. Yeah, <laughs> just If I know it scares you every time I do it, I'm going to do it constantly. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking you were going to help me desensitize to the phones ringing. But. Well, I may. <laughs> <laughs> no, it makes me feel important. I get phone calls all day, even if it's just from you. Even if it's the same person. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, so how are you feeling about Trump now? I, I mean... A, not enthusiastic, but I'm still <laughs> I'm still happy. I'm, I'm, dude, I enjoyed the first Trump term, even though it was a mess. Okay, and, and there was plenty that didn't that like you set your expectations low, right? Like so, I mean, I, and I came in with a pretty low expectation, but I I like I enjoyed the first term. I think the second term is going to be a blast too. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, and and think. the the appointments that he's making kind of confirm some of that. Like I mean. Um, I mean, they're, they're not great appointments per se, mm -hmm. but they should be fun ones. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on appointments this week. That's, that'll be a topic for next week. Well, yeah. And once they start, like I say, once we get a little closer to, well, I, you know, they're still kind of like coming out day after day right now yeah. and they're not, they're not Official. technically appointments yet. Yeah. I mean, but they won't be appointments till he's actually in office. In office yeah. Um, so, but I do think it's worthwhile to kind of talk about this. There's a, there's a, um, there's a strong Zionist flavor to his security appointments. Yeah. Well, you knew Except that. for Tulsi. You, you knew that was going to be the case. Yeah. I mean, that's, no, that, that, I, I it doesn't know come it. As, as surprise. Okay. I, I didn't know it. I was hoping that he would be, he would look for more like non-interventionist people. I mean, I guess it's not really a surprise. Yeah. I guess I'm not surprised, I suppose, but I, I was really hoping that he would move in a less bombastic warmongery direction. Yeah. Um which <coughs> Marco Rubio Yeah, Rubio's a pretty rough one. Is not uh Walsh is not um yeah. whatever the Hegus Hegus of something or other, his long unpronounceable <laughs> name. Yeah. Also not. Um yeah. Tulsi is DNI. <laughs> That's kind of <laughs> funny. I don't know how she does that job since she's not allowed on planes. Um, <laughs> I'm sure they're going to remedy that. Like, <laughs> Maybe that should be her first act while in yeah, office. Right. Uh, take me off the no, no fly, fly list. list? Yeah, right. um, where is right. that list, by the way? And <laughs> yeah. let me burn it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, wouldn't that be nice? Oh, that would be awesome. Um, so I, I that actually, that appointment makes me feel really good because there were rumors that he wasn't, and even like based on things that he'd said, that some of those people he wasn't going to give actual positions to. He was going to name them as mm. such and such a czar, which isn't a 
job well, title. And, it's and just it was a, you're not wrong because that some of that was floating around. But I, Trump's a loyalist type of guy. Like he's, I feel like he's going to really take care of the people that took care of him. Yeah. Um, now, unfortunately it's Trump. So you got to remember like these appointments are probably all pretty short lived. Like yeah. I don't expect these people well, yeah. to stay in his orbit for very long. <laughs> now, what would be awesome is if, uh, Marco Rubio left the Senate to do this job and only held it for like a month. Yeah. Well, and that'd that's, be pretty awesome. Dude, that's likely. <laughs> um, because I mean, you remember, I mean, it may be, this may be different. We, he may have learned some things, but like he was going through people like crazy in his first administration. Yeah. And I don't look for this to be any different. Um, you know, so, so yeah. a lot of these people that we like that he's surrounded himself with right now, we probably shouldn't get too comfortable. <laughs> yeah. May not last very long. May not last. Well, it, a lot of the problem was that his initial appointments weren't terrible. Yeah. Um, they were just outside of the mainstream of politics, people like Rex Tillerson and, Tillerson, and so yeah, forth. Yeah. Um, and they were eliminated by the political machine. Yeah. That but, they'll have a harder time. Well, first off, um, people like Marco Rubio. Well, he's part of that machine, so it, yeah, he exactly. Ain't got to worry about um, him. and he's he's savvy. Yeah. I don't like him, but he's not dumb. No, and I I don't hate him though. Well, like, I don't hate him don't, either, but he's he's there are worse politicians. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. So, um, um, that's kind of where he's at for me. Um but you think back to like Jeff Sessions. Like I mean, he yeah. turned his back on Sessions and that guy hasn't been anywhere since. Well, like, that's cuz Jeff Sessions turned his back on him. Yeah. I mean, oh, absolutely. Like recusing himself from investigations and so forth. That, yeah. Yeah, um, but you got the thing. He was looking with, for some protection. He didn't get it. Yeah, the thing is with Sessions, though, like Sessions was there from the beginning. Like Sessions came, kind of went out on a limb to to endorse him because he, yeah, I, I see you, man. Okay, I'm just making sure. <laughs> um, yeah, he went out on a limb to endorse him early, earlier than anybody else. Like when it wasn't like a, a good thing for even Republicans to be doing. Mm -hmm. He stepped out and done that. So. Yeah. Um, and then to just like turn his back on him over that seemed crazy. Um, Gates is AG's not terrible. Yeah, uh, I've seen a lot of people are upset with that. Oh, one. I know. I um, know. And I thought that, I thought just like you, I was like, is that really that bad? Like, no, I, that, I don't have a problem with that pick. <laughs> he he is um, he is a trust buster. Yeah. Which, if trust were actually a thing, I wouldn't have a problem with. Yeah. Um, but just like taking companies apart, like that's just not the problem, I guess yeah. is what I'm trying to get at. Um, that said, I mean, I, I think that he's, I, he's, he at least seems like a person who's principled. Yeah. Yeah. That's something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was like the real problem with Kamala, right? is that she didn't have any real principles. Yeah, you didn't that know her, where she stood. Her position was whatever <laughs> is going to further my career the most. Yeah. yeah. Um, and in fact, I was talking with my mom about Kamala at one point, and she was talking about all those, you, you know, actually, it wasn't just my mom. Like, the media and everybody was kind of up in arms about how much Kamala's positions had changed from the time she ran for president before in the Democrat primary, and this time that she was she was the, um, nominee. the nominee yeah, and how her, she was like kind of pushing a, a sort of right wing campaign allying with the Cheney's and all that stuff. Uh, just as a side note, um, trading the Cheney's for, uh, Tulsi and RFKJ, I'm perfectly fine with in yeah. terms of like party swaps. Oh, Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. If this was like a draft or something, like yeah. I'm drafting the Tulsi and yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, while her, when she was running in the primaries, she was pushing like this very progressive agenda. Yeah. And people were trying to get her to explain the difference. And my mom was of the opinion that, um, she really was a crazy left wing progressive who was, putting out these positions just because 
she thought it would earn her more votes. And to some degree, I agree. But I don't think that she actually holds any real position. Yeah. I think that she was pushing left-wing progressive progressivism in when she was running the primary because it was a Democrat primary and the she felt like that the was, farther left she went, yeah. the more likely she was well, to accumulate votes. She felt like that was a good lane to run in. Yeah. That that was a that, that was a good place to be. Yeah. I want to be just right of Bernie Sanders yeah. um because I'm still part of the core. Yeah. 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 Um and then when she was running in for everybody's vote uh, she's, she assumed that, you know, the Democrats, she'll get their vote because she has a D next to her name yeah. and maybe she can pull some of the more right leaning or anti Trumpers or whatever by pushing kind of a right wing position. I don't think she actually holds any of those positions or maybe even any position at all. Yeah. She's like the emptiest of empty suits as well, far as I'm concerned. It was amazing to you because a good politician would be able to walk away from some of the, like to take that 2019, 2020 campaign mm -hmm. and like, like find the way to answer the questions and at least kind of save face a little bit. And she was incapable of doing that at all. Yeah. Like she just, you put a camera in front of her with that, those type of questions. She just folds. Yeah. Um, I mean, she's, she's just not good at it. She's just not a good politician. Yeah. You know, I mean, say with that what you will, like I say, I mean, that maybe, I mean, I don't like politicians. So the fact that, you know, she's not a good one should be a feather in her cap, but it's not like, <laughs> yeah. no, it just, yeah, it just makes her an idiot. Yeah. Incompetent. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, uh, you were saying last week that you, um, you were looking forward to hearing some real explanations from the left as to how they lost this election. Yeah. Are you hearing that? <laughs> Not a whole lot. <laughs> like I, the the soul searching ain't going well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> put it that way. <laughs> well, I want to I want to play a clip for you. All right, because I got a I got a real kick out of this one. You, I think you'll you like. You got this. a doozy for oh, us. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, this guy is a uh, a a black man, Princeton professor. Goad, I think. Like G A U D E, I think is his last name. Anyway, this was on MSNBC. You'll like this. All right, I'm ready. There's this sense right, that whiteness right, is under threat. The demographic shifts, the country isn't what all of these racially ambiguous children on Cheerios commercials are confusing the hell out of me. Right? Eddie, a lot of people voted because their life's too damn expensive. And it, and it was here and it they was- They voted for, you're telling me, Stephanie, that all of these people who believe that their lives are, that bread is too high and eggs are too high, that they voted for a convicted felon, a guy who said we can grab the pea. I think that a lot- They of voted people, for I, I, this I, I, guy. I'm not defending it, but I think there are tons of people that don't pay attention to, and I'm not defending it, don't pay attention to politics at all. But we, okay. while we live in the most prosperous country in the world, people are saying life's not fair. I'm not doing well. My son's still living in the basement. I can't seem to get a job. I don't like the status quo. I'm voting for something else. And he. Was I the love you to I life. I love you, oh. but I do not believe that. Mm -hmm. I cannot believe that. And the reason I think you believe it is because you don't want to believe that that's what's really motivating them. It's always the case. We, people don't want to believe what the country actually is. Because if they believe it, they're going to have to confront what's in them. I don't believe that. They voted for a crook. A person who they know is stealing from just doing everything to undermine the so-called country that they love. And then they're telling us the BS that it's economics. We know that's not true. I just can't get over it, man. Just the ignorance to sit there and be like, I just that that it's whiteness that yeah. that's that's what we're blaming here. Like it, it's not the economy; it's that there's a, a we, I just I can't get over. Don't it. Don't doubt him. He's an intellectual. Oh, is that right? He's a professor at Princeton. <laughs> well, well, far be it for me to. <laughs> yeah. I mean, certainly I just, he's way smarter than all of us. Apparently, uh, I don't know. It's not on display. I'll put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, obviously it's a racial threat that caused everybody to vote for Trump instead of, actually not everybody. He didn't win the popular vote by that much, yeah. but you just can't imagine that people not being able to afford their lives 
yeah. impacted that's, that their had vote. had an impact here? Like, you know, and he's even pressed by the MSNBC girl that's like, hey. That you at know, least look. has a, she has a little bit of sense. Yeah. Like, I mean, not, not a lot, but there's. I mean, it, she has to say over and over again, I, I don't agree with it. Yeah, right. You know, but she I'm, at least I'm knows what's going it, on, yeah. though. Like, I yeah. mean. Like, and just, um, she could just be exactly right that there are enough people that don't pay attention to politics and all this BS about who did what to whom in the news of the various politicians. And it's just like, my life is 40% more expensive than it was four years ago. Yeah. Five years ago. Yeah. Um, I don't want the status quo. Exactly. Like, I mean, it's not rocket science. No. <laughs> Uh, and the deal with him being the convicted um, felon or whatever, that's just a joke, too, because oh, any, yeah. <laughs> because anybody that's paying attention knows that, yeah, he was railroaded into that. Yeah, like, I he mean, was charged with that a was, crime that nobody else would be charged with. Yeah, yeah, that was that was just the system coming after him. And most plenty of people out there recognize that. Yeah, that 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 for exactly what it was, was this was the system like retaliating. Yeah, um, like he's so much worse of a person than Kamala. Yeah. yeah. I, actually, there's uh, lots of people out there that believe that he's so much worse of a person than Kamala, but they're wrong. Yeah, I, I don't see it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I just I thought you'd get a kick out of that one. <laughs> so, so it's very disappointing where the left is heading here because I, I yeah. really do root for the left to be better. Yeah, like, I mean, it's about racism and sexism. Yeah. I mean, obviously racism, because it was, uh, you know, 16 years ago that we, and then 12 years ago where we twice elected a black president by overwhelming majorities. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know where all well, that racism was. With If the left, then. if this is going to be the left's attack and plan going forward, they will never win an election again. Not yeah. in the presidential. Like, the, it, this, it won't work. Like, mm-hmm. that's, that's... You're not going to win that way. It's not a winning message. It's just not. Yeah. Well, I'm not an F word, but I'd be happy to vote for a woman if they put up a good one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, mean, um, I, I contributed to Tulsi's campaign. I was fixing to say, Tulsi, man, Tulsi, what? what's the next election? 2028. 2028. Yeah, mm-hmm. Tulsi 2028. It could mm-hmm. happen. Yeah. Well, no, not likely. No. You don't think so? Because she's not going to get a Democrat nomination. She could. Get, I bet she could get the Republican. She might be able to. I, I wonder if they're setting up JD Vance. They oh, they're absolutely. I mean, that's the plan now. But there's mm-hmm. a lot of there's a lot of real estate between here and there. That's true. Um, you know, anything could happen. And we'll have a. I, I say we'll. The Republicans will have a full primary. So, which is what, and that's something else that that they just the left just doesn't realize is the fact that they didn't have a primary gave them the weak candidate. Mm-hmm. They uh, like, if they had had a real primary, even if it was just a small primary, um, something where they could have hashed out some candidates and gotten somebody competitive, um, them just throwing this person in here that had couldn't get through the first primary. Yeah. Um, was just, it was just bad, bad idea, man. Yeah. We have decided for you. That's why I'm really glad that she lost. Uh, You know, as I talked about last time is that that sets a really terrible precedent in this country that already has a little problem with, um, the candidates being decided (laughs) for us really anyway. Yeah. Um, is if they were able to do it that blatantly and get away with it and actually get her elected, that would have been really, Oh yeah. Um, really terrible for the future here. Yeah. Well, and, and the hope is, is like I was saying before, is that the left will take from this and build on it and become a better party, which if they would lean into the anti-war, I mean, that's where their base is at anyway, mm-hmm. um, could make the country better. Yeah, I'm, I don't know that their base is there anymore. Well, I mean, <laughs> I've talked to so, so many longtime Democrats and left-wingers that are just all about fighting Russia. yeah. Now, because, you know, (laughs) he Putin elected Donald Trump and Putin is worse than Hitler. And so is Donald Trump. Yeah. Well, that's just people that's fallen for the propaganda. Yeah. But it's that's my point is that it's been really effective. Yeah. Um, Man, talk about just effective propaganda. I had a customer come up to me today in a mask trying to talk to me. And I just 
Man, all I could think the whole time I'm talking to this woman is like, man, like you have just like drank the Kool-Aid. Yeah. <laughs> like dry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like it's just, oh, it, it blows my mind. Like just the, the, but propaganda works. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's, and, and that's, I just, all I could think the whole time I'm talking to her is like, this is a person that, uh, like this person could fall for anything. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, um. I'm about to finish Tom Wood's book, uh, Diary of a Psychosis. Yeah. And I highly recommend that to anybody who has any doubts. Actually, I even, I even more recommend it to anybody who thinks that, um, public health did a great job and thinks that Fauci's awesome. Yeah. Uh, because it'll hopefully dispel you of that. Um, (laughs) like that's a, that's an opinion that you really need to be disabused of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this will do it because yeah. it, it's contemporaneous. Yeah. It's, you know, he's writing, he, he assembled newsletters that he was writing throughout COVID mm. while these public health officials are making these claims about one thing, but the data doesn't support it. But it's just not there. Um, yeah. And it's even more powerful when you see all the claims that were made, because a lot of that stuff you've forgotten, I promise. Like even oh, those yeah. of us that were like tracking all that stuff at the time. Well, I remember that listening to the no agenda where they did the clip show where <laughs> it was just um, like clips from in, in the mm-hmm. same way, kind of in order. Yeah. Um, and it's like, oh, I forgot about that. I forgot mm-hmm. about, like, there's so much that went, we had so much going on during that time period, and it mm-hmm. was so ridiculous. Like, to, I, I tell you, that that episode of No Agenda should be, like, in the Smithsonian or something. Yeah. Like, I'm telling you, like. Well, so should this book, because, uh, like, you not only get the, the claims, the quotes that he's um, citing, yeah. um, but you also have all these graphs. Yeah. And I, I assume that the site's still up, um, that you can probably still go to covidchartsquiz.com. Oh, yeah. And go through that. That's and, the one where you have to pick what which state had which policy. Yeah, yeah, based on the graph <laughs> only the with, all the, um, with yeah. all the dates removed and everything. Yeah. 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 Uh, Good luck. <laughs> at, or point out on this graph at which point the state instituted a mask mandate. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, there's no way to tell. <laughs> like, it's... Show me the uh, the Thanksgiving bump. Yeah, all right. <laughs> it's just doesn't not exist. there. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't matter what the policies were. Yeah. yeah. It, it's like, it's completely random. I mean, it's completely random in the sense that it's the, the track of the virus is completely independent of all mitigation measures. Yeah, yeah. Including the vaccine, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's not random in the sense that, like, there's a definite trend up and down that follows through in various regions. Yeah. Um, no matter what their policies were. So you have states or even counties that are right next to each other um, that, you know, one of them had a hard lockdown, mask mandates, um, you know, et cetera. And the other one had nothing at all, and their their charts are almost identical. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you wouldn't be able to tell them apart. Yeah. And in fact, if you were forced to guess, yeah, you'd probably guess wrong because it seems like most of the time, not always, but most of the time, <laughs> that kind of situation is set up. The curves are almost identical, but the one that's slightly better is yeah. actually the one with fewer mitigations. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, um. Yeah. Anyway, that was that that's really interesting. And for, for anybody who, who's still on board with that, that thinks that the public health officials were trying their best and so forth. Like there comes a point when you're reading that book, like you get far enough into it at the beginning, you can believe that like, Oh, well, they just didn't know they were, you know, trying their best. Um, with the information that they had, but there there comes a point because it covers about well, two years. I felt that way too. Like mm-hmm. the at the um, uh, what was the first thing where we the the slow the curve? Or yeah, yeah, fifteen days to, to, to slow the spread. Yeah. yeah. Um, like I didn't, I wasn't for government doing <laughs> Flatten it. Flatten the curve. Flatten the, the curve. That's yeah. what it was. I couldn't remember. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I mean, at that point, I was like, you know, I'm not for the government stepping in and doing this, but I'm okay with people voluntarily kind of stepping back and trying to do some mitigation. Mm-hmm. But I was pretty quick off that. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, well, once you get, I don't know, maybe a year, maybe less 
yeah. into this thing in this book, you start to realize like, no, they have to know better this at this is, point. This is intentional. And they're still, yeah. yeah. They've um, gotten a taste of power and they want to exercise it. Yeah. And I was reading uh, Duisberg's book about the creation of the the AIDS virus, the invention of the AIDS <laughs> virus, I think is what it was called. Yeah. Um, and uh, he's talking about um, a, a point at which it became pretty clear that the that the predicted uh, heterosexual epidemic that was supposed to happen in the 80s and early 90s didn't. Yeah. Um, the AIDS <laughs> remained confined in the original risk groups, yeah. which is mostly drug users. Yeah. Um, and uh, like intravenous drug users or um, uh, people in the homosexual community that were using the nitrates, yeah. like amyl nitrate and stuff. So which is really toxic. <clears throat> and uh, so then like some major paper, and I can't remember which one now uh, came out with an article saying, Hey, we can kind of relax a little bit here. Um, it looks like uh, the HIV di- virus isn't as infectious as we thought. Um, it hasn't exploded like it was expected. Um you know, it, it remains confined to the original risk groups. If you're outside of those risk groups, you can chill. Yeah. And, um, and there were, you know, memos from the public health department saying, no, what did you just do? You've ruined everything. <laughs> like we're yeah. controlling. I mean, they didn't say it exactly like this, but it is, it essentially said we're controlling these people's behavior in a direction that we want through fear. And you just took away <laughs> that fear. Right. You can't do that to us. <laughs> Oh, that's crazy. And so you have the same thing during COVID. Yeah. One more thing I want to say about, um, since we're on the COVID subject. Yeah. So I, um, we'll definitely come back to this one regularly. Well, but. and, but this is kind of the reason, the reason I want to mention it is the mm-hmm. fact that we will come back to this regularly. And the reason is, so what, what brings it up is I shared a meme on the page this week and mm-hmm. shared it to some groups and, I got one comment in particular just kind of really stuck in my crawl. That one of the first comments on when I shared it to one of the groups was that beating a dead horse again. And I was like, all I could think is like, yeah, this is a horse worth beating. Yeah. Like and I'm I just, not convinced it's dead. <laughs> well, that well, that's part of the point. Is yeah. like, I, I, it just really shocked me that somebody would be like, well, like it's and it's almost like that they know that they got the person is like he knows that he got it wrong during that time and doesn't mm-hmm. want to keep hearing about it. But yeah. the point is, is yeah, you may have got it wrong, but this is still a battle worth fighting. Yeah, like this is not so, this is not something to just be forgotten about and pushed aside as like it can't happen again because it yeah. absolutely can. That, that's what I was about to say. They'll probably Probably try and sell us a dead horse again. Yes, exactly. And yeah. the more we we speak out against this, even now when it's not really a threat, because it's they're not there's no thing out there looming over us right now. Yeah. But Trump isn't back in office again, mm-hmm. and this happened under his watch. Whether it was, I'm not saying it's his fault. I'm just saying yeah. that the machine put this up on us in in his ter- first term. Yeah. Like I say, I mean, we need to be vigilant. Well, I mean, there was some indication not that long ago that they were trying to push bird flu. They were. Well, and it, it is shocking because especially if you kind of look back, they're, they always have something that they're kind of like, uh, they're kind of floating around, you know. Yeah. Um, same thing with monkeypox and um, mm-hmm. Ebola. And like it's, there, there's always something they're like, uh, you know, if the right opportunity arises, we're going to do this. And mm-hmm. COVID just kind of struck a chord. Yeah, well, the most effective way to control people's behavior and to convince people to turn over more power to some kind of centralized government is fear. And there's nothing that causes fear quite like uh, the idea of an infectious disease that you can't yeah. see, you can't detect, you don't know, yeah. you know, um, it, it's, it's more <laughs> effective than terrorism. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Cause at least, you know, you can see the guy with the big, with the long beard and the turban and whatever, you know, <laughs> yeah. and feel like, Oh, I can, well, I can avoid this, but right. yeah. can it, you can only avoid the people in masks now. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> that, that's good. Um, 
people in masks cannot be trusted. So they, <laughs> hey, that's that's my theory. Yeah, that's <laughs> when that person in the mask came up to me today. I was trying to go the other way. <laughs> it's fun. that's going to be a theme here because all right. So that's a that's a line from the Princess Bride. Oh, is it? okay. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. people in masks cannot be trusted. Ah, now I like it. Um, we were going to talk about Ross Ulbricht. Yeah. Uh, yeah. because we've gotten some pushback on like, you know, that this guy's a criminal and maybe yeah. he was over sentenced, but he's still a criminal, et cetera. Yeah. think we should address that. Uh, but, um, he also used the pseudonym, um, the dread pirate Roberts. Oh, that's right. I completely forgot about that. <laughs> and I just got, uh, today is in fact, um, it's on my mind because, uh, today I got the, a, uh, really nice, um, leather bound, um, illustrated edition of the princess bride. Oh I'm yeah. Kind of excited uh, to read. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway, yeah. um, yeah, Ross Ulbricht. So my mom, your mom, my cousin, like <laughs> a lot of lot, folks have the same opinion. Here. Yeah. Lots of people feel like this guy is a real criminal and, we're going to try and make the case that he's not. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, and for those that don't know, Ross Ulbricht, this was the, this was the big bargaining point for the libertarian party with Donald Trump yep. is that this was, this was the demand, yep. um, is to free Ross Ulbricht on day one. So we get to know on day one, whether he keeps his promises or not. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, but Ross Ulbricht developed the Silk Road website, which was a, let me see if I can explain this in a way that it was eBay for drugs. It's not even, I mean that, that kind, kind of what of. it turned into, it, it was a dark web. It was a platform facilitating anonymous and insured voluntary exchanges. Yeah. Um, it's well known for the sale of illicit drugs, but that wasn't all that was being transferred on there. No, that's true. Um, it, of course the, the thing was that, it drew that as its as its primary market because you can't go sell your weed on eBay. Yeah. But yeah, I mean it's essentially it's essentially an eBay, except that the users are anonymized. Yeah. Um using uh Bitcoin or other cryptocurrency. I think that one was Bitcoin only, yeah. but um you're using Bitcoin to make the transfers. The transfers are being held in escrow until the product or uh, whatever it was is received, at least in certain cases. I don't know if it was every transfer, but um yeah. I mean that was the idea, I think. Yeah. Um <laughs> and that's how Ross made his money is that you know, you hold the transferred money in escrow, you take a cut from there. Mm-hmm. Um and you know, that's how you support the website. Yeah. So, but really it was just a, at its core, it was a platform to facilitate anonymous voluntary exchanges between people. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing oh. illegal about that. Yeah. And, and actually yeah. if you're, if, if there's anything illegal, it would be the people buying and selling. That yeah. Were, that I were mean, committing the crime. Right. Like, I mean, even well, if you're going to go, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to dispute the w- use of the word crime, but okay. yes, they were, they were, um, engaging in the illegal activity. Okay. I'll That's, grant that. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. the people that were actually doing the exchanges were engaging in the illegal activity. Yeah. Um, there have been insinuations that he was involved in uh, contract murder, uh, and so forth. That's mostly, I don't know. I, I, the evidence for that doesn't seem real strong to me. I think weak. that this was, you know, one of those things that the government was putting out about him to make him seem like a worse guy yeah. um, than he was, uh, is. Yeah. Um, and then the guy was given two, was it two consecutive life sentences? Yep. Of which he served like 10 years so far, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for this, for creating a really useful platform for people to exchange products. Yeah. It's like any of the, anything illegal sold on, it's like imprisoning Jeff Bezos for anything illegal sold on Amazon. Yeah. Well, and, but a lot of people will say that, well, it's, it's Bezos uh, job to, to make sure that doesn't happen. Yeah, uh, which I disagree with, but that's that's the argument from mm-hmm. the other side is well, he's responsible for what happens on his platform. Yeah, um, 
which is the same argument they make to Twitter and Facebook when mm-hmm. they don't censor the way they're supposed to as well. It's their job to, to control their platform and to control speech on their platform, which I also think is garbage. Yeah. I, oh, I agree. Um, and, you know, there is some evidence, I know that the, the mainstream would dispute, but there is evidence that there, there is like child trafficking going on on eBay um, and remember the whole uh, Wayfair oh, yes. thing years ago, <laughs> which has been in the mainstream debunked, but I'm not convinced. Yeah. I mean, I, yes. there's, there's some strong... There's some shady stuff <laughs> yeah. going on there. There's some evidence that that, you know, that was going on, you know, when people are selling a pillow that sells for 10 bucks for 10,000 with a, a <laughs> name attached to it. Yeah. Um, now, I, as far as I know, or at least the from the mainstream reporting, like none of that actually panned out. Yeah, but it seems sketchy. But they also don't provide, at least at the mainstream reporting I looked at, they don't provide an explanation of what was happening. <laughs> exactly, which I find interesting. They're yeah. just really well, the intent best, on telling honestly, you what wasn't happening. The best, the best I heard was that they were trying to claim that those were glitches. Yeah, that it was a that, that, that oh, it's those, always a glitch. That, yeah, <laughs> that those prices weren't actually correct, and it was just a system glitch. Mm-hmm. But then that seems even sketchier to me. Yeah, like, now it just feels like you're covering something up. Yeah, strange, strange. So, so um, you know, the other part of that, and this is why I, I will grant illegal activity, but I won't grant crime. Okay. Um, oh, you know, you ought to pull the. Somebody responded to my cousin. Um, and, uh, gave a Lord Chesterton quote that was, that was solid. Now, like my source for my position on this is, uh, Lysander Spooner. Cause if you've listened to the podcast for any length of time, you know, I'm a big fan of this guy. He is writing in the mid 19th century and, um, he has a, now at the time he was writing about the temperance movement, the, the movement to ban alcohol. Um, but he has an essay called Vices Are Not Crimes. Um, and essentially his definition is uh, that crimes are um, do a damage to a person or their property. Um, vices uh, don't do damage to another person's person or property. Yeah. Um, the, and the vices and well, crimes always are crimes, but vices and virtues and the way he's defining those is, you know, vices is something that tends to, um, increase your happiness of, vir- or, sorry, I have that backwards. Virtue is something that tends to increase your happiness. Vice is something that tends to, um, reduce your happiness, but that these, that's a continuum. Yeah. So <coughs> first off, people are all different. So what may increase your happiness may not increase mine. What may be a vice to me may be a virtue to you, et cetera. Yeah. Um, and the, the degree matters. Now, degree doesn't matter in a crime. I mean, it matters in, in the sense of how, like, how steep a crime it is, but it's a crime at whatever level. It's yeah. a crime to steal a dollar just as much as it is a crime to steal a million dollars. Yeah. Um, whereas uh, it may be a vice to have 10 drinks a day, but not one. Yeah. You know, (laughs) exactly. Um, Drinking at a wedding, having a drink or two at a wedding is not a a vice necessarily having 30 is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And that may be different from person to person too. Absolutely. So um, this, (laughs) uh, let's see. Jeremy Allen was the person's name. Uh, I I, I did enjoy this quote. Oh, dang it. I got to click a button on your phone here. See more. See more. I can't see more. Why can't I see more? Oh, there we go. Okay. Phone's too complicated for me. (laughs) Sorry. Um, This is, uh, yeah, like I said, this is a quote from Gilbert Chesterton. Maybe not Lord Chesterton. Um, The free man owns himself. He can damage himself with either eating or drinking. He can ruin himself with gambling. If he does, he is certainly a damned fool, and he might possibly be a damned soul. But if he may not, he is not a free man any more than a dog. Very solid. Yeah. (laughs) Um, it's all like content right there. <laughs> the, uh, the argument, uh, from Lysander Spooner is that, uh, it, it's vices, the ability to, um, 
exercise vices is about owning yourself, property rights, pursuit of happiness. Um, and so essentially, and, and he also has this, it's actually from this essay. One of my favorite quotes of Lysander Spooner's is, uh, no man wishes to be, um, regulated either in his person or his property against himself protected yeah. in either his person or his property against himself. Absolutely. Like, so if I, I should be allowed to dispose of my property in whatever means I see fit, it's my property. Yeah. And if I can't make those choices, then I'm not free and it doesn't belong to me. Yeah. Right. So if I want to waste my money on drinks or drugs or gambling or whatever, that's my business. And if it gets out of control, it can become, it can lead to crime, yeah. but it is not in itself a crime. Whatever act <laughs> is doing harm to others is a crime. Yes. But it's a crime it, whether there was alcohol or drugs or whatever else involved or not. Exactly. The the alcohol, drugs, or whatever led to it is not in itself a crime. It's just bad decisions. Exactly. So. Yeah. Um so, you know, like the difference being, you know, it's, it's the pursuit of happiness idea, I think is what you should really stick to with this, yeah. uh, is that, um, I should be able to choose whatever path to happiness I think is most fit for me. Yeah. And I should be able to dispose of my property or, or damage myself as much as I want in that pursuit. Yeah. And in fact, that's part of what we fought for. <laughs> Right. Back in 1776, Absolutely. Um, is to make those choices. And if any government or any other individual, like they may be able to lead me by their example or try and push me away from something because it didn't work for them. But what didn't work for them may still work for me. And I need to be free. The only way I'll know is if I'm free to experiment for myself. Exactly. So. Um, so that's why we don't think that, that all these vices, uh, such as drug use, um, alcohol use, uh, promiscuous sex, whatever it happens to be, yeah. are crimes. Yeah. Free people get to do what they want. Yeah. Free people can choose their own path to happiness. Yeah. And the only way that they'll, they can possibly know what the appropriate path to their happiness is, is by giving the freedom to experiment for themselves of what works best for them. Because the answer is not universal. Yeah. And going back to Ross here, um, I mean, many think he's a hero for creating that website yeah. because that gave people an avenue to get things without having to worry about being shot or mm. in, in some kind of dangerous situation. Yeah. Instead of a uh, back alley drug deal, yeah. they had a perfectly safe exchange. Exactly. Um, and here's something else to think about. Like we think about this in terms of illicit drugs, like in terms of things like heroin or uh, marijuana or cocaine or whatever. Yeah. Let me I, like, I don't have direct evidence of this, but I can pretty well assure you that there was there were people in foreign countries that can buy what are prescription drugs here over the counter much cheaper than you can get them in the United States, selling them, doubling their money, <laughs> and still being half the cost and of what it was in the United States. Doubling their money and still providing a service. Yeah. Uh, an, uh, a less uh, expensive service. Now yeah. imagine that that's something like, um, uh, oh gosh, <laughs> what do you take for insulin? I was fixing to say insulin. Yeah. You yeah. know, so somebody in Mexico buys insulin over the counter for 10 bucks. Sell it, sells it to a guy in America for 20 bucks who would usually pay 40 to 80 bucks for the same amount of insulin yeah. using this website. Now, Who's going to complain about that? Where do you think the impetus to actually like capture this guy and put him in prison and, and shut down the site came from? <laughs> you know where it, it came from. It came from the pharmaceutical, it's the Pfizer and all of these companies like that. Tobacco companies, alcohol distributors. Like, yep. there's There are a lot of businesses in this country that would have seen um, some damage to their profits because people could go somewhere else yep. because of the competition here exactly. that, that Ross helped create. So if you take away the idea that, that the drugs themselves are illegal, or if you think about things that actually could be very helpful to people, um, 
you think of it during the pandemic. If you were like, if you're a believer in the ivermectin. Yeah. It was hard to get a hold of during the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> but if somebody from another country could sell it to you over this website safely, send it here. Yeah. You know, um, so uh, there's a lot of good in, in this platform. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> anything that's facilitating exchanges between people, voluntary exchanges between people is a net positive. Which is the reason he got two consecutive life sentences. They yeah. wanted to send a message oh, yeah. <laughs> that we are not going to tolerate a platform that does something like this. Mm -hmm. um, and this is what we're going to do to you if we catch you. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, that's, that's what is happening here. Mm -hmm. So Lysander Spooner himself, he also has a essay about his attempt to open, or actually he, he successfully opened and ran a, um, a competitor to the U S postal service, a letter carrying, uh, business yeah. where he was able to more efficiently and effectively move letters from person to person and at a lower price yeah. than the U S postal service. Did and they come so and break his legs. They didn't break his legs, but they shut down his business. I bet they um, did. they took it to court and made the claim that while the constitution, the constitution actually does require that the U S government provide a letter carrying service, a postal service. Yeah. Um, they made the argument that the constitution not only requires that the government create a postal service, but that it actually gives the government the exclusive Civil right, right. <laughs> oh, to wow. operate a postal service, which wow. it certainly doesn't. No. But the U S postal service couldn't compete with him. Yeah. Yeah. So with his business, so they just took him out. Yep. Wild. So, um, I suspect that it was that kind of thing that brought down Ross Ulbricht. It yep. wasn't because they were concerned about people's, you know, moral health, <laughs> no. or physical health or anything like that. They were concerned about a few interest groups, financial health. Yep. Exactly. Um, so did I make a case? <laughs> <laughs> I feel pretty good about it, but I was already on board. Well, yeah, that sometimes <laughs> so, a problem. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what it comes down to is that people should be able to make their own choices about what they put in their bodies yeah. and that there shouldn't be any government regulating voluntary exchange between well, people. It, it goes back to the very simple principle of no victim, no crime. Right. You, you provide a victim, I'll provide, I, I'll give you a crime. But mm -hmm. like I say, if there's not one, and in this scenario, at least for the most part, there isn't one. Yeah. I mean, if you can prove he was like trafficking kids or something like that, like mm -hmm. those are crimes that are worthy of going after. But yeah. There, I haven't heard that accusation. There's not, him. there's not any evidence of that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've heard it th floated around, but mm -hmm. it's, there's no, there's absolutely no evidence of it. And I'm pretty sure they didn't bring that up in court. Yeah. Um, I mean, he, he is actually himself a pretty hardcore libertarian, isn't he? He is. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't imagine him tolerating, <laughs> Yeah. Human trafficking. No, absolutely not. So, mm. um, like I say, another thing I would suggest. Why well, can't I think? I can't think of her name right now. Um, but like, go YouTube, Ulbricht mother or something like that, and yeah. listen to her talk. Yeah. <laughs> Just, just go listen to her talk one time. Yeah. Um, she was making the rounds. Like she was at a bunch of the LP conventions, like the mm -hmm. state conventions. She's talking to anybody stuff. who would, who would listen literally and like, has been yeah. since he's been in prison. Absolutely. Um, tirelessly, yeah. uh, fighting for his release. Yep. And, um, you know, I, uh, I'd like to think, even though mom disagrees with me about whether <laughs> his activity was legal or not, or should yeah. it be legal or not, yeah. um, I I would like to think that she would work as hard as Ross Ulbricht's mother has worked to get me free if something like this were to ever happen. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so uh, anyway, that's uh, that's why we think that he should be free. We don't think that he committed any crime. Exactly. And, uh, and you can't facilitate, like, the idea that you would go after the person that created the platform that allowed the exchange instead of the people that were consuming. E even if you grant that consuming the product is illegal, yeah. the person who consumes the product is the greater criminal than the person who sells the product, who is certainly a greater criminal than, again, than the person that created the exchange, the ability to exchange the product. <laughs> right. 
And <coughs> so he's like the least of the criminals here, yeah. as far as I'm, I'm concerned. Absolutely. Um, maybe they say he makes up for it in volume. <laughs> <laughs> that would probably be the argument. Uh, I don't know. I don't have an answer to that. Yeah. Uh, except that, you know, let's, let's see. Uh, infinity times zero. <laughs> Carry the Carry one. The one. <laughs> Still zero. It's always zero. Yeah. Yep. Um, all right. You, you have anything else you want to talk about? I don't think so. I think that pretty well covers it. All right. Sweet. We'll wrap it up then. Um, oh, actually. Do you have something else? Yeah, yeah. Um, I As long as I, I have this Lysander Spooner essay here, there was a, a paragraph that I wanted to read out of it. <laughs> Um, because it, this just kind of sums things up really nicely. Um, he said, the object aimed at in the punishment of crimes is to secure to each and every man alike the fullest liberty he possibly can have. Consistency, co- ah. let me start that over. All right. I didn't, I'm not even drinking tonight. Um, the problem is that my... Uh, the pop filter that I have keeps getting in the way of my view of the the book. book. I'm sure I can hold it in a position where that wouldn't be a problem. All right, let's try that again. And still talking to the mic. Yeah. Um, The object, the object aimed at in the punishment of crimes is to secure to each and every man alike, the fullest Liberty he possibly can have consistently with the equal rights of others to pursue his own happiness under the guidance of his own judgment and by the use of his own property. On the other hand, the object aimed at in the punishment of vices is to deprive every man of his natural right and liberty to pursue his own happiness under the guidance of his own judgment and by the use of his own property. There you go. Yeah. So that's, yeah, we'll end there. Good quote to end on. I like it. Thank you. Um, all right. So... Nothing special about next week, right? You're... Nothing I can think of. But... Okay. I may have a vaca- vacation I'm forgetting about. Yeah, but. it could be. We'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out an hour before. Yeah. Maybe mm-hmm. I should I should text your wife and ask if there's anything going on next That's week. definitely always a good plan. She knows more than I do, I promise. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So um, we expect to be back next week unless there's a mystery vacation. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, in the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook. You can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Podbeam. Like and share, comment, subscribe. Uh, you can always email me at michael at Um Yeah, leave reviews, whatever. Tell your friends. Always tell your friends. Yeah, spread Appreciate the word. that. Um, and, uh, yeah. So we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later.